the outline is um, first going to motivate why simulate drug supply and then how the enrollment and supply chain are simulated, show you an example um, that was generated through software that we have in Cytel to simulate drug supply, make a few comments about adaptive design, and then we'll turn it over for the implementation uh, aspect. Um, Please feel free to ask questions at any time. I'll uh, either address them at that time or I'll defer them. Um, but, but, you know, we can keep it interactive because uh, if I don't have anything coming later that will address it, I might choose to address it at the time because it might be better that way. Um, so, so the typical questions to address are, are how much drug do we need for the trial and, and how much more will we need if we're going to open more sites and how does the interplay between the number of sites uh, and the anticipated enrollment rates require us to, uh, in advance, make sure that the drug supplies are there so that there aren't any stockouts and we don't have patients waiting with no drug available. Um, the, the traditional approaches uh, have been to just use historic overages, overage amounts and experience. Uh, I've talked with some drug supply people and each one has his own spreadsheet and he has a different spreadsheet for each trial he worked on in the past and he kind of knows that in his mind and says we need about this much overage historically. Um, the disadvantages of that are that there's no real quantitative assessment for the particular trial that, that you're um, considering doing. Um, it, it is not easily defensible except that, okay, well, you know, there is this historical data, but the trial is not exactly like what was done in the past. A and there's no systematic way to answer what if questions um, to say, well, how can we optimize it? What if we open new sites? What will the impact be? And what if we use multi-kit assignments for each patient versus give the patient all his drug at one time? So via simulation um, and, and accounting for the uncertainty, uh, we can um, predict how things might happen. Uh, what we do is, is we simulate the arrival of subjects using a Poisson arrival model. Um, and there, there are historic, uh, paper, there are papers uh, that mention that the Poisson model is, is an effective way to model the randomness of patient enrollment. Um, and analysis of recruitment data from a large number of trials um, ha has supported the use of that model. We, we simulate the supply chain then by setting trigger or resupply amounts so that at each depot or, and at each site, when the drug gets below a certain preset level, which we can tune, um, we'll, we'll do the resupply. And then w w when the stock reaches that level, we send out addition to get it back up to a certain preset uh, am amount of supplies. Um, and, and those levels are, are carefully chosen via the simulation to balance the, minimize the amount of overage, but also um, make the risk of stock out as small as the user wants. So there's an example um, that we use uh, to, to show how this works. Uh, consider a placebo-controlled trial with four, dose, four, four treatment groups, three doses and placebo, and, and nearly 500 patients. Uh, and, and, you know, we we'll do the usual kind of permuted block randomization and, and treat patients for six weeks with a once-a-day dose of drug at, at, at the doses shown. So the base case will be to uh, give out all the drug at the baseline visit and have a single pack for each dosage um, so, so that there's a 20 milligram tablet, a 40 milligram tablet, and a 60 milligram tablet and associated placebos. 
and we make all that at once. And we'll arbitrarily say that, for example, this is going to be three, three countries uh, and, and 25 sites, uh, mostly in the U.S., but a, 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 a substantial number in the U.K. and, and a few in Canada. A, and they'll accrue at the rates shown at, at the bottom of the slide. And we'll have one sourcing depot at, in each country. And, and then sites will initiate um, according to these schedules. Uh, it'll start in the U.S. And, and then the U.K. will come up four months later and Canada will come up nine months later. Um, and, and then the, the, the last sites will come on board as shown. Um, and then the lead time... Um, for newly shipped drug, when the supply get falls below the stock out or falls below the, the floor um, level, uh, it will take five days uh, because it's not overnight shipping, it's, it's land-based shipping because we, we want to be economical about it and, and we'll tolerate that, that, that magnitude. So we have simulation software that accounts for all these factors and simulates the arrival of patients according to all of this scenario. Other inputs are some uncertainty around those enrollment rates and will vary the enrollment rates of the Poisson uh, between, uniformly between 50 and 150 percent of the pre-stated values that I showed before. Um, and we'll do uh, th th three consignments per week, um, uh, one, one, one for each depot. Um, and then um, the software uh, runs simulations and, and via those simulations automatically sets the optimal trigger and resupply levels so that there are zero stockouts because we don't want a single patient uh, to show up with no drug uh, ready to be uh, assigned. Um, so, so in the simulations, we, we, the software set the levels to ensure no stockouts. Um, and, and we originally used a single campaign of 1,200 packets of drug to supply the 500 patients. Um, and, and these were the automatic trigger and resupply amounts. So whenever the, um, whenever the drug supply got to three uh, in the U.S. and the U.K. or two in Canada, we sent a resupply uh, to get it up to five, five, and four. And in order to... Um, uh, uh, it, it, these numbers are derived, um, and, and when you use these numbers, the overage is, is 154%. How did you define that overage? Um, Repeat the question. Yeah, the, the question is, uh, uh, how do you define overage? Overage is the amount of drug that the patients are not going to take. So in order to stock those 470-some patients in the doses that were given, we need to send out 154% more drug than, than those patients will need in order to ensure that none of the sites have a stock out. Because th those depots have to send it to the sites uh, so that the site has 3, 3, and 2 always because there might be three patients coming that week. Uh, okay, so, so that's what that means. Um, and, and the average number of resupply consignments at, at three per week was 133. So, so keep those numbers in mind as we go through. Uh, this is a detailed summary of the results from 1,000 simulations. You, you, you get sample size and um, timing estimates uh, and, and information on the 
the, the actual number of packs that were distributed to the subjects and what was shipped and then the overage. Um, and, and then the number of packs that were shipped, the, the overage is 154%. That's the red number there. That's what I sh said before. Um, and, and the number of consignments was, was on average 133. Um, and then there's the number of packs per consignment. So this is a sample of the output that the software generates. But uh, there were no stockouts. Um, and, and those were the optimal settings to, to uh, ensure no stockouts. Now, this curve shows the relationship between the number of consignments, that, that, that's the number of times we send drug out to the depots, um, the, 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 the number of consignments, a, a, and then the amount of overage. So you can see that when the number of consignments gets to around 80 to 100, um, you, 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 mit, you, you pretty much minimize the, the, the amount of overage. And the only way to have fewer consignments is to increase the overage. So now we have that base case and we want to play some what-if games and that's the value of this software because 154% more drug that's just going to be destroyed is costly. And we'd like to see how we can adjust the settings uh, to, 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 to minimize the, the overage. So what if we use overnight delivery? Um, it's a lot more costly, but it shrinks that five-day delivery down to one day. Um, if we do that, um, those trigger levels decrease substantially. And the overage reduces from 154% to 116%. But the number of consignments stays about the same, 134. So to save that 40, almost 40% of overage, you have to pay for overnight delivery. So you have to balance that cost. Then the next factor is what if we do multiple dispensing visits? Remember, we gave all the drug for six weeks to the patient at the baseline visit. What if we resupply it at, at three weeks? Um, sometimes a patient might drop out before three weeks, and then we won't use that extra drug. And if we resupply at three weeks, we could get a little savings there. Um, so what if we do that? Well, that reduces the overage down to a similar level. So this is with the five-day delivery time, the multiple dispensing visits could, could lower it. So instead of overnight delivery, we could do multiple dispensing visits. Um, and then what if we don't use a 60-milligram tablet? What if we just give all the doses with 20 and 40 milligram tablets? Again, we can lower the um, amount of overage to, to under 100% and still maintain those stockouts. And then what if we do all of that stuff, overnight delivery plus multiple dispensing visits plus multiple packs per kit? Now we reduce the overage down to only 63%. Um, so that's a substantial savings. Um, and the software lets you define the optimal triggers to come up with these uh, savings. OK, well, all of that's at the study planning stage. Um, what happens when the study starts and things go differently than you had planned? Um, while the study's going on, the software can interface with the actual database information and grab the accumulating information and use that information instead of those um, Poisson model arrival time assumptions and so forth uh, and actually model the enrollment based on what actually happened so far at the individual sites uh, and countries. And then 
we can forecast the demand and reestablish those settings to optimize based on the actual accumulating study data. And we can play games like what if we open more centers? Um, what if we change the triggers? What will the impact be? Um, and um, if the drug is getting old and we have to manufacture more, we can model that as well. Um, adaptive trials for dose finding um, could yield increased need for one dose versus another dose. And we don't know what that's going to be at the start of the trial. Um, so the amount of overage for an adaptive design is substantially more than for a traditional fixed sample size design. Um, the software can interface with adaptive design simulation software to um, uh, simulate what, what will be the overage and the settings to minimize drug supply for an adaptive design. So simulating drug supply is even more beneficial to saving overage in an adaptive design situation. And then once the trial gets started and we start to get some information on where the uh, randomization is going to focus in the dose, uh, the, the available doses, um, it, again, it becomes uh, more. It becomes beneficial to have to, to have the simulation capability to, to optimize the drug supply. So, with this set of examples, um, we showed how simulation planning of drug supply can how drug supply without simulation can lead to large overages and um, still risk uh, some missed randomizations. But with the software, you can develop strategies for drug supply to eliminate any um, stockouts. And, and the tools can be used to make mid-course corrections as a trial progresses to optimize the number of sites you open, close sites, et cetera, um, and, and evaluate the trade-offs between um, the various factors that influence uh, how you provide drug supply to sites and clinical trials. Thank you. Um, my name is David Friend. I'm a senior business consultant with Medidata. And now that we've discussed that uh, theory, uh, theoretical simulation piece of here's what we need to do from a supply chain standpoint, here's our suggested um, you know, buffers and resupplies and things that we want to do, how do we actually go through and implement this in an IRT system? Um, today, we're going to be looking at Medidata Balance, which is our randomization and trial supply management system within the Medidata Clinical Cloud. Um, it is a configurable system that allows sponsors and CROs to set up um, very easily, not only the randomization side, but also the trial supply side. Um, and for our, our, our look today, we're going to look at two different pieces. We're going to look at the visit schedule for this demo study that we have, and then we're going to see how the supply plans interact with that. So for our demo study, I have a number of visits that I've set up. I have a lead-in visit, which is going to be a dispensation of drug before they're randomized. We're going to do randomization with dosing, and then we have a number of follow-up visits that happen 30, 60, 120, and 180 days. Why this is important is that we want to make sure that the system knows which way we want to look at calculating what we need to send to the site. And there's a couple ways that we can do that within balance. So once we know what our setup is from our, our visit schedule, we can go into logistics, which is where we manage our different supply plans. And uh, I think one of the interesting thing mentioned is that, you know, you aren't going to have one supply plan that's going to fit all of your sites wherever they may be located. We see global trials now that are across the world and every country, every region has different shipping requirements, different custom requirements. And we want to be able to accommodate that within these different supply plans. So the way that it works within balance is you can set up unlimited numbers of supply plans. So if you've got 10 sites, you could set up a supply plan per site 
and modify it as needed. You get to larger global trials with you know, hundreds of sites potentially, you may wanna have regional plans. So in this case, if we scroll down, I have one, that's our US base plan. We could just as easily have a European base plan, an Asian base plan based on where our sites are and what those requirements can be. Now, once we have the simulation data, we're able to go in and set up these plans as our starting point for our um, trial supply management. And I'm going to scroll down here and talk about some of the components of this. We've set this plan up as a predictive and buffer approach. So in that case, that schedule we looked at, Balance is going to look at subjects who have been entered and created and look at their visit schedule to make sure drug is on site for that visit schedule. So in that case, if your visits are far enough apart, if it's a known dosing schedule, that works very well because they know, well, we're, they're going to come in at day 30. I'm going to make sure that there's drug on hand at day 30 for that subject for the appropriate type of kit that they need. Now, where this becomes complicated is in our visit schedule, we have a lead-in dose. So we need to have drug on hand before they're ever randomized to make sure that we have study drug for them. We also need to have study drug on hand when they're randomized so that we can dispense that. And then finally, that third situation where that buffer comes in handy is if you're gonna have resupply. So you may either need to change a dose or resupply a kit based on that subject's visit schedule. So uh, there's a number of situations when you want to use predictive and buffer as that, but what you can do then is very easily take those settings that your simulation creates, and if we look down near the bottom here, we have our three different articles. So we have three different uh, ointments. We have a placebo, a 4%, and an 8%, and we can set what our initial stock is. So this is the initial uh, shipment to the site. And then we have our minimum buffer. So when the site falls below that amount, so when they get down to two, we're then gonna go ahead and restock them up to a maximum buffer of six. Now, depending on what your dispensation schedule is, um, how often you're dispensing, how many you're going to be dispensing, you can vary these numbers. So if your lead-in drug is the placebo that they're gonna be doing, you may wanna increase those numbers. But again, those are things you'll find out through the simulation. But you can have each item with its own specific schedule of when you're gonna be getting these. Now, for the predictive portion of it, you do also have control over things like long and short window. So how often are you going to, how far are you going to look out to see if the site has enough drug on hand? And then if they don't have enough drug, use that long window to say, well, we want to stock them up to the next 60 days worth of visits to make sure that they have an, enough drug on hand. Now with balance, these will then be used by the shipping algorithm to generate the shipments to not only say, do we need to have a shipment for this site, but then how many kits of the varying types that we need to send for that. Now, I, I think another interesting piece of uh, the simulation discussion was around mid-study changes. And I think it's something that's often overlooked is, you know, you get those numbers, you kind of get them plugged into the system, you turn it off, and then the study's running. So you're dealing with all that day-to-day -day operational stuff, you're dealing with your supply chain folks and shipments and clin ops and all those things that are going on. But I think taking that time at some point during the study to reevaluate these levels and say, are we still on the right approach? Has the enrollment changed from what we initially thought? Did we end up with more sites or less sites? Did we have a protocol amendment that affected the visit schedule or something about that study design that we may want to update? Because of the way that we've set up balance as a configurable system, it's very easy to have those simulations rerun and say, well, we need to tweak these um, levels for our supply plans to make sure that we're optimizing our study drug. Whether enrollment's going well or it's not going well, you can adjust up or down accordingly. So you can make these fine tunes and these changes as you go through the course of your study and not be locked in either to paying a change order to a custom system to change that, but being able to tweak those as needed to make sure your sites have the appropriate supply but not have too much on hand. <clears throat> 